In this video, I'll explain to you why we use posture ray x-ray analysis on our cases. Um, the analysis of x-rays is the most accurate way to assess someone's spine. We're able to see a lot of information about alignment. It gives us information about wear and tear processes that are occurring that we actually cannot see or feel through palpation. And it shows us uh, any areas that may be problematic for corrective chiropractors to um, work on um, more particular instabilities where the joints are moving too much or areas of the spine which are heavily fixated with a lot of scar tissue or chronicity. So with this image that you see in front of you, this is a side view of my neck. I've already ruled it up and I'm just going to demonstrate how we rule it up. There's a number of points that are marked and we run through and click on all of these points and it does take around about 20 minutes to actually do uh, analysis on a full set of x-rays. So as you can see I'm going through and marking each individual vertebra. On the lateral views we use four reference points and on the AP views we use three reference points. Now once we've analysed these images and ruled them all up, it's run through the software. The comparison of my spinal x-ray in this example is to a normal spinal model and this has been developed by the Harrisons from Chiropractic Biophysics and Biophysics is one of the most researched or if not the most researched technique in the history of the chiropractic profession. So I'm going to show you two other ones. This is an x-ray of my full spine from a side-on view and this is an x-ray of my spine from front to back and on the right side here this is my right side but on the image it's actually the left and on here this side will be my right side. So I've got a slight bow of my spine out to the left hand side. So I'll rule these up and we'll get back to it in just a moment. Okay, so we've got back, we've finished ruling up the x-rays and we're going to analyze the x-rays now. So if we have a look, this is the lateral view of the side of my neck. This is the jaw and the back of the head. The green line represents a normal cervical curve and the red lines are where my spine is sitting. So in a moment we'll go and have a look at the x-ray report but as we can see I've got a reasonably good curve. The head is slightly forward shifted here. When we bend the head forwards we're looking for a smooth bending forwards and what I can see with my upper neck is C2 which is this joint here doesn't want to bend forwards on C3. It's quite flat and the upper neck here, these gaps right here aren't opening. So we'll go back to the lateral. It looks like this gap and this gap were smaller here, a little bit wider here. But when we bend the head forward, we're not getting any opening. So I've got an upper neck restriction right here, which I'll have my wife adjust um, next time she's in the office. Now, when I bend my head backwards, something shows up here and I had a sneaky suspicion of I've got a disc problem at C5. So when we bend the head back, we can see that we start to break back at C4, moves back on 5, but C5 is moving back quite a bit on C6. Now, two years ago, I was um, poleaxed into the jiu-jitsu mats when I was doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu and felt my neck go crack, and that night had pins and needles in both arms. Now, the nerve roots that come out at C5, 6, innovate the arm. So I knew that I'd done some injury to that area of my spine. Now it doesn't bother me too much. I do get some un discomfort in my uh, neck from time to time and occasionally I'll have some pins and needles in my arm. So this x-ray confirms what my suspicion was that there is an issue at C5-6. So literally I would not want to get this joint adjusted because it's unstable. Um, at that area. If anything, I would be having most of the work focus on C7, T1 and T2 in this area to improve extension to take that pressure off C5-6. So that's my neck from side on. We're going to have a look at the spine from a lateral viewpoint. So this is my full spine 
jaw here, head here, shoulders, backside, belly button over here. Lumbar curve leans forward, so I've got a translation of my thoracic spine forwards, and that will tend to flatten out the thoracic spine, so that's normal. Neck curve is sitting well, and if we look at the plumb line, I'm just slightly forward, so right up here should be moving back and touching the green line. Now on this, I'm actually looking at myself front on, so this side here is my left, this side here is my right. So as we can see, my th spine bends out to the left-hand side. So this could be classed as a mild scoliosis. Now this was set up from having a short leg on the right-hand side. Uh, initially I had a 14 millimeter drop. So what had happened is my whole body had shifted across to the right-hand side and then compensated to bring the head back in line and I've developed this mild bend in the spine. So I'm gonna be working on that over the next six months and we're gonna get some follow-up x-rays to see how well we've corrected it. So we're gonna save out of this and have a look at my report now. Now these reports will be sent to you after you've had your report of findings in our office. We're going to scroll down, uh, date of the evaluation, date that the x-ray was taken, tells you what a normal spine is, gives you more information about how the spine should be sitting, what happens when the spine degenerates. Also looks at curve angles, the impact of curve angles, how we measure them. We also go through what are the risks of x-ray exposure. So have a read through, there's some research there which will explain um, dosages for radiation. There is always a risk with X-ray radiation. Um, lower doses obviously reduce the risk. However, there's no way that we can analyze someone's spine objectively without taking an X-ray of their spine. Now we're gonna get into the X-rays you'll see a normal healthy curvature of the neck from the side. Just here, green line represents normal, green line represents normal, and the red line is my X-ray. My head is positioned 11.5 millimeters forward, and my neck curve measures 34.6 degrees, and it should be 42. So I've actually only lost 17.6% reduction in my neck curve, which is pretty good. Considering that I am 40, five years of age, all my discs are relatively healthy. I'm not showing any degenerative changes where the bones start to spur out. So if we scroll down and we have a look at these two, this is where the problem shows up and the computer software will pick it up. In the head backwards position, extension position, your spine demonstrates possible ligament damage at C3, 4, C4, C4, 5, C5, 6 and C6, 7 spinal levels. So I don't want to be adjusting in these areas if the areas are unstable. I want to be adjusting in the upper neck or down in the lower neck to work on this uh, problem that I've got. Scrolling down, we're having a look at uh, a normal full spine on the left and my spine on the right. It gives measurements, tells me what's happening with my thoracic curve. So uh, my thoracic spine curve measures 43, should be 44, 1.4% loss. Low back curve measures 37, should be 40. So it's only a 7.5% loss. And this is the thing, because I've got good curves in my spine, I've, I've had relatively uh, minimal issues with my low back other than the uh, disc in my neck, which is evident when we have a look at the X-ray here, ligament damage. So I need to be aware of that with the type of sports that I do. No more Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And then we have a look at the AP. We can see the spine perfectly straight in an ideal model and then I bow out to the left hand side. So as I mentioned before, my goal is to correct this over the next six months. It doesn't give me any issues right now, but what I wanna do is make sure that I have no issues or minimize the risk of any future issues. And then we go through a whole bunch of angles. Um, you'll see the normal values, the patient values, and the difference from normal. Um, 
side view of your neck extended, possible ligament damage. So there's so much information here. Now the good thing with this is when we do follow up x-rays to assess how your corrective care program is going, we'll do a comparison and it will actually tell us how much um, improvement's been made. Okay, so that's just a summary of how we do x-ray analysis at the posture doctor. Very important part of our analysis. It gives us something to work towards um, if the patient is looking to correct their problem and uh, it's an objective measurement. So I hope that helps and uh, I look forward to showing you your x-ray report and um, posture ray report uh, when we have the opportunity.